<laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Dan Wisenhunt with Apple, and uh, I came with my esteemed colleague, Ryan Kaufman, to just give you guys a little glimpse on how a company that has over 25,000 employees in, in the immediate area, uh, how we view this transportation issue. And uh, it, it's huge for a company like Apple, uh, especially when we consider that uh, the vast majority of our workplaces are here in the West Valley, uh, which has the unique challenges of, uh, of being uh, definitely underserved, that would be a, a, an understatement, by, uh, by public transportation. So uh, we have, uh, we, we approach the trans transportation problem by having an entire department run by this gentleman over here, Ryan Kaufman, um, who works tirelessly every day to try to solve our transportation issues, uh, commute and otherwise. Um, most of you may know we've got a, this, this 25,000 plus workforce is, a, is very dispersed around the Bay Area, uh, probably a radius that's over 50 miles to the north and well over 50 miles to the south. Um, and, and our goal is just to get our employees out of their single occupancy vehicles and uh, get them transported quickly and safely to work. Um, so, you know, we, you, you hear about uh, these very large-scale solutions here tonight, and you're going to hear about more, but uh, we don't have 14 years to wait around for the ultimate solution, so we build it ourselves. And uh, with, with Ryan and his team's help, we've, we've de developed a, a very sophisticated transport system, uh, which, is, which is a mini version of some of the things that you've seen uh, on these slides here tonight. Um, so uh, the issue with Apple, though, is we continue to grow. And, and this, this job that we have is not getting any easier. We, with, with this uh, new uh, headquarters that we're bringing to the, uh, to the local area here in a couple of years, um, we're, we add yet 13,000 more jobs to the area. And so the, the, pro the, prob the problem just continues to extend itself. Um, uh, and you know, we, in addition to this transport system that we run, we, we, we widen, widen every off-ramp and uh, local road feeder that comes into the area that we can, but that only goes so far. Um, in, in addition to that, we, uh, we look at every other mode of transport that we can to tie into our system, bi bike ways, pedestrian ways, and so forth. Um, but those only go so far. So our bottom line is that um, we have to collaborate with the local governments, with the state, uh, with other major employers in the area to come up with the very best ideas uh, as to how to solve the problem and come up with solutions that are relatively quick. Um, and uh, we think that just simply that if we can get more of our employees um, uh, out of their cars and into some reliable transportation uh, alternatives that uh, Apple will ultimately benefit from the higher productivity that comes with you know, happier employees as they arrive to work. Um, but we also do our share in sort of reducing this incredible congestion that Stefan told you about earlier. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let Ryan come up and give you a little more detail about uh, how our system is built and, and uh, sort of some numbers that show you uh, the magnitude of it, right? Uh, thanks, Dan. Um, I'm responsible for doing the uh, large challenge of moving uh, an employee workforce as large as Dan mentioned, 25,000 a day, uh, to and from Cupertino. So I'm very much in the operations of this day to day. And um, I'm going to explain to you a little bit how we approach this. Um, we have a variety of different densities of employees throughout the region. Uh, we have a, a small portion of people who live very far away from, from Apple, uh, 30 to 40 miles or more. Um, then we have a, a larger group who's in the 10 to 30 mile range. And then we also have a small, a, a very large group who lives in the 0 to 10 mile range. And so the way we approach what we call transportation demand management is by providing a, a whole host of services to all of these different commutes. And the different types of commutes that people are attracted to um, vary depending on how far or close they live to work. 
And so some of the services that we offer um, include a, an express bus service, which Rod had explained, um, kind of sits in between the Uber and light rail in the transportation transit spectrum. Um, and this is really addressing what we consider a regional challenge. Um, the Bay Area has a multitude of transit agencies that are, that are all kind of competing in many ways for, um, for ridership and for, um, for funding. And so um, when we operate buses throughout the region to places as far away as Marin um, and San Francisco, uh, Berkeley, Oakland, Pleasanton, down to Gilroy, over to Santa Cruz, um, you know, this is, this is a regional, regional challenge that we're filling um, the gap with. And um, this express bus, affectionately known as the Google bus, um, has kind of taken on a life of its own. And a number of companies are starting to do this. And um, it's very successful because this is filling a gap in the transit infrastructure um, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so that's addressing this long haul commute problem really well. Uh, we've, we found that people um, really want it to be comfortable and it, it also saves them a lot of money. Um, the further you are away from work, um, the more your commute costs. And so we, we feel like we've got a really good handle on, on that commute challenge, um, but it, it becomes more challenging as you get closer and closer to the work, workplace. And so um, some of the things we're looking at um, as part of our new campus development and as part of our transportation solutions is uh, really starting to focus on these short zero to 10 mile commutes, um, whether that's solving that um, with better bike and pedestrian infrastructure um, or starting to look at um, other types of technologies and partnering with our um, esteemed colleagues here um, to really start to push the envelope on, um, on, on what we can do to think different about uh, local transit, which is, is really what we feel the, the next step in transit is how do we get people from you know, these zero to 10 mile trips. Um, there's, there's a lot that can be done there and we really think that a lot of this is going to be driven by technology. Um, a lot of our ridership participates in, you know, in daily use of our technology, whether it's a watch or a phone. And uh, the expectation is that, you know, we just pull out our phone or look down at our watch, and um, you know, that will determine how I'm getting to my destination, whether it's to a meeting or to lunch or over to City Hall to give a presentation. Um, so you know, that's kind of our TDM program in a nutshell. And I can run you through a few slides here. I'm not used to the AC2 slide deck, but um, there's some, some interesting uh, renderings here of how some of the transportation facilities will develop at our new campus. You can see here there's some, some highlighted bike paths. Um, we, we, parts of Tantau and Homestead and Wolf will kind of be more focused on the pedestrian and bike side of things. Um, and with that, I'll hand it over to Cooper. Thank you. 